Hey, this is Trevor from Obituary, and you're watching TVS Metal. London's a huge city, but uh, yeah, there's, this is always one of the best shows for all, all over the world. We, we love tour in Europe, I mean, obviously because of the culture differences and the food, <laughs> and the shows are always great in Europe, so, but yeah, being out with Exodus is amazing because when I was a teenager, I, you know, Bonded by Blood was a huge influence for my music. We've never toured with Prong before, I've just known Tommy because we're... Uh, colleagues I guess or you could say or whatever peers of the same music so and King Parrot we've actually played a festival with those guys uh, in Brazil actually one time years ago a few years back we made a new live album and the EP with the two new songs uh, the reason we did it on that tour mainly because our sound man that was with us he brought a little recording system with him and he he was like hey we can we could record every night and if you want to use it maybe we can make a record out of it and some of them were multi-track some of them were just stereo so some of it we couldn't even really mix, so we brought, you know, we went through and chose our favorite performances of certain songs, and different, and we wanted it from different cities, so make it more special. There's cities where, like uh, Boise, Idaho, not many people play there, so that was one of the songs live, so the kids there are there, they'll get to see the album, they're like, wow, we were there, you know, so it was just kind of a, on a whim, it was never really like pre-planned, you know, to do this. On our new album, which is going to come out like Marchish in March, uh, we haven't. Re we just finished recording this literally before this tour started. In fact, there's some leads still that have to be finished, which we're doing in a hotel tomorrow. And so, the actual title we haven't made made a decision on the title of the album yet. Uh, I think there's going to be like 11 songs on the album, including "Ten Thousand Ways to Die." That song is going to be on it, and uh, another 10 or 11 on top of that. The guy who recorded Joe Sincata, he's the one who did our live recordings he's the one mixing the album right now he's in new york mixing it so every day he's been sending us different mixes so it's really brutal compared to inked and blood uh music i mean as far as composing and stuff it's always kind of the same as far as how we structure or start writing a song it always kind of has been from day one it is more difficult to come up with something fresh and catchy and long lasting it's it's really strange especially after you know writing music for hell 30 something years now in my life um it's it's definitely difficult um in fact when we did inked and blood we spent five four years probably composing and recording and rewriting and restructuring and re-recording till we were like really satisfied recording an album as far as music goes is probably the least fun part of music for me personally because it's real tedious you know you gotta sit there pay attention focus you know, you got to perform perfect, and then you got to mix it. Mixing the record is probably the worst thing for me. Like, I've already heard my songs a thousand times, these new ones, and it's like, not again. You know, because wait, we got to tweak this one little thing, you know, and he's like, oh, here we go again. So, obviously, when we were younger, like with Scott Burns and More Sound Studios, it was probably a little more fun because we were young, had more energy, didn't have families and had to go home and take care of the kids and do all this stuff and we had less responsibilities basically so it's probably more fun then but it's still i never as far as mixing never been that fun for me like it's it's a lot of tedious we did the kickstarter thing uh, a few years ago and the effort, the whole concept was to try to we were going to make our own label basically is what the whole initial idea was and we went through all these different um channels and, and people and companies to help distribute the record press it and all this stuff and then right in the middle of the whole process relapse they called us and they were like hey we know you you're doing this thing and uh we'd like to work with you and and to me to work with relapse is not like working with a normal label they, these guys are fans of music you know what i mean these guys are fans true diehard they're into it we basically split the profits. We split all the expenses. We share it all, hundred, you know, fifty-fifty, 
and it works out great for both of us. Albums in general for the whole music industry do not sell as many as they did, say, 15, 20 years ago. A lot of that's because of the digital formats that are in the internet. People can download stuff, and people trade, and and a lot of people don't even buy the stuff anymore. Um, so I think bands like today to survive more, you end up touring more, you know, because fans love the music, so they come to the shows, and it keeps the whole ball rolling. Put down the guitar, no, play it, have fun. But to to be in a band and it be successful is a very, it's just a luck of the draw, really. Donald and I started jamming in 1984 together, and for us to be a death metal band and have the success that we've had and continue to have success, it's it's mind-boggling. I don't. We're lucky, really lucky people. We we you know obviously we created something kind of unique. So that's one thing. Like if you're a new band, you know, try to have your own thing. You know, try to do something very unique. I still get inspired by the old music. And in fact, when I listen to music, it's usually old classic. Like if I listen to metal, it's always going to be my old Slayer records and Celtic Frost, and it still influences me today musically. Um, there's so many more bands today compared to back then too. It may be harder for every band to be influential musically because there's so many of them, you know, today compared. But I'm sure there's some that stand out big time that people want to sound like. Like a Black Dah- Dahlia Murder. Those guys are got a pretty good name. I think they definitely influence people, I would think, musically. And Justice for Art. Yeah, that book is great, too. I love it. I John's got a copy of it. We were flipping through it at the studio like a month ago. Um, it's very cool. I was pretty proud to have one of our record covers in there. It's great. I mean, metal art's always, or just music art for covers has always been great. I mean, and metal especially. We always have this crazy extreme, you know, and the artists are always great. So it's really cool. Mm-hmm.